today. PCI Express 5.0 SSDs have an issue. Intel's 14th Gen gets huge performance. NVIDIA GPUs are set to change everything. And the first gaming GPU that isn't NVIDIA, Intel, or AMD gets benchmarked. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, the first PCI Express 5.0 consumer SSDs have gone on sale, but there's a pretty big problem. The absolute first SSDs were released in Japan by CFD Gaming, and luckily we already have some benchmarks thanks to Momomo underscore US, to which it certainly has some pretty wild sequential read and write speeds according to the benchmark. Unfortunately, when it comes to random read and write speeds, it isn't much faster than PCI Express 4.0 SSDs. But the real problem with these new drives is that they apparently get pretty hot, as you can hear in this video. The fan they use for this one is not quiet. In fact, according to this, the 17 by 17 millimeter fan gets to a whopping 21,000 RPMs. Since these SSDs were released, Gigabyte has released their Aorus Gen 5 series of SSDs. And as you can see, they don't have a fan, but they do have a massive heatsink that's pretty shocking. Basically, if this keeps going, we're gonna get SSDs that require a shroud as big as a GPU. Let's hope that doesn't happen, but it's not looking good. Next up for today, Intel's upcoming 14th gen CPUs are set to be a massive jump in performance yet again. But first, I have great news. It's Build Your Own Month at Micro Center, which means tons of deals throughout the month for your next PC build, including great combo deals like this Ryzen 5600X and a Zeus Prime motherboard. And of course, while Micro Center sponsored today's video, don't forget that they're where I built my first ever PC, so you can definitely trust them for your PC build. And if you haven't heard about Micro Center yet, they're the most amazing place for PC hardware enthusiasts. I've actually driven hours just to visit one before, and it's that visiting part that makes Micro Center special. They're real, physical stores that you actually go to, and they have it all, from GPUs, CPUs, I'm talking full aisles of motherboards, even custom water cooling parts. What's even better is that their staff is very knowledgeable and are always there to help you with your build. I've personally had nothing but great experiences with them, and with February being their build your own month, it's the perfect time. Just visit my link in the description to see more of their great deals. Now back to the story, remember that Intel stagnated for years with no reason to improve their products as AMD simply couldn't compete. Then came Ryzen, which really took them by surprise. It wasn't until their 12th gen products that Intel finally began to push back hard against AMD. They later did it again with 13th gen by upping the core count by quite a bit. Well, in a couple new tweets from the well-known leaker Raichu, Intel could do it yet again. According to the first tweet, Intel's 14th gen Meteor Lake is targeting a whopping 1.5 times plus efficiency when compared to their 13th gen at the same performance, which is pretty huge. If there's anything that Raptor Lake does poorly in, it's efficiency. I mean, the power draw is off the charts, so 50% better efficiency would be great. With that said, Intel will almost certainly up the performance by quite a bit, so it will likely get around the same power draw, but they should have a ton of room to up that performance with these kinds of gains and efficiency. Not only that, but according to Raichu, he believes the iGPU will reach nearly double the performance of last gen. Basically, AMD lit a fire under Intel that only good competition can do, and hopefully their next gen Ryzen will be a big jump in performance as well. Either way, with AMD's Ryzen 7000 X3D and eventually Intel's 14th gen, it looks like both companies are bringing their A game, which means nothing but wins for the consumer. Next up, a recent update to Google Chrome is about to change everything for NVIDIA GPU owners. Originally spotted by video cards, it appears the Chrome 110 update includes support for AI video upscaling. That's right, NVIDIA's upscaling tech is coming to Chrome to upscale your streamed video to 4K. NVIDIA somewhat showed this off a little while ago, but they only really previewed it working with YouTube. The thing is that this tech should have huge benefits that I don't think many have really thought about. According to NVIDIA's blog post, the upscaling sounds like it should work with any video that you watch in the browser. So you can actually do things like buy the HD version of Netflix and simply upscale it to 4K instead of being forced to pay extra for the 4K 
Netflix streaming. Of course, upscaling isn't native resolution, so there can be artifacts and things like that, but this is really interesting. Plus, it can upscale lower resolutions as well as a range of frame rates. So you could watch older videos that have pretty low resolution and simply upscale them. Ultimately, this looks to be a serious game changer for NVIDIA GPUs. More specifically, support for NVIDIA's 30 and 40 series is coming in February, with support for 20 series cards coming later. So far, while Chrome has gotten support, we're still waiting for a driver update from NVIDIA. Not only that, but it looks like the video upscaling won't be turned on by default. Apparently, you'll have to turn it on in the NVIDIA control panel. Either way, this is definitely something to look forward to. And lastly for today, we finally have some real benchmarks on the new gaming GPU that's not made by AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel. If you remember not long ago, More Threads released one of China's first gaming GPUs called the MTT S80. The card was the first ever PCI Express 5.0 GPU, and it was interesting to see a new player in the game. Not long after, we saw some reviews, but they all seemed a bit odd and didn't give us much information. Luckily, a tech enthusiast outside of China was able to get his hands on one and run some tests. And it's really interesting. For one, while we know it supports DirectX 9 and 11, it doesn't support certain features like tessellation. So it apparently needs DirectX 11 underscore one feature set. Either way, he was able to run some benchmarks. And as you can see, in 3D Mark, the GPU does get crushed by Intel's A770. So this isn't going to win any awards for fastest GPU or anything like that. I'm talking between 35 and 64% slower than Intel's ARC GPU. Still, it's not bad for China's first GPU that can actually game. I mean, it can apparently even run Crisis, so not too bad. With that said, the company is still having issues like really high idle power draw, so they've certainly got a lot to work on. We'll have to see how they compete in the next few years. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for video upscaling or are you just ready for new GPU competitors? Let me know down in the comments below and make sure to visit Micro Center for their build your own sales event. And as always, have a great day.